Here is a list of materials needed for making a one-part silicon box mold. Again, we need a molding board for attaching the model to. We need cardboard or foam board for building the box around the mold and a glue gun for putting everything together. Your basic mixing buckets, mixing sticks, a 2000 gram digital scale. Again, we are using the tin-based silicone mold right from Art Molds, but this time with the regular catalyst. An additional item used here is a vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber for de-airing the silicone rubber. This is an important step in removing all the bubbles out of the silicone as it is not a brush mold. A couple of additional items used here are a eighth inch diameter metal rod used for creating vent spews and a sharp tipped hobby knife for cutting our zipper cut into the rubber mold. Setting up a model for producing a block mold is a little different than producing a blanket mold. We'll be using the metal rods as spews after we glue the model down to the base. We attach our spews at all the low points. This allows air to escape, air that normally would be trapped in the mold making process. Using the glue gun, we glue the spews in place. Afterwards, we draw our parting line on the model. Think about where the parting line is. You want to eliminate seams as much as possible. The next step is putting our cardboard box around the model. Plow at least an inch all the way around the model for the silicone. Using the glue gun, we glue down the box. It's critical here that you do not allow any leaks. Silicone will find the tiniest crack and flow out of it. Check it twice. After the box has been prepared and sealed, we are now ready to spray a wax release agent, which will allow the silicone to demold easily for the model. To estimate the amount of rubber required for producing a silicone block mold, there is a very simple formula. Take the volume of the box, the length times the width times the height, which will give you the total cubic inches of the box. You divide that by 24 cubic inches per pound of rubber. Take that number and multiply it by 454 grams, which is equivalent to one pound. Subtract 30% of that number to give you the approximate grams of rubber needed to pour your rubber mold. You should check your calculations twice. This process is a little different from the way we make our rubber from the blanket mold. For one thing, our catalyst is a different color than the base rubber, so we have an easier time mixing our catalyst to the rubber. Regardless of that, you still have to make certain the rubber is thoroughly mixed before the rubber is placed into the vacuum chamber for de-airing. The de-airing process will remove all of the air from the silicone. This will give you a bubble-free mold. Again, take your time scraping the sides of the bucket, making certain there's no base or catalyst left unmixed. De-airing the silicone rubber requires a vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber. As you can see, the rubber rises to the top of the bucket and after all the air is removed, collapses back down to the bottom. Allow the rubber to de-air for at least one minute afterwards. An important technique that is often left out in the silicone block mold process is pouring the rubber in a thin stream. This will allow any leftover air which has been trapped in the rubber to burst as the thin river of silicone fills the mold and flows over the model. Don't dump your rubber into the mold. Pour in a thin stream. Using the same tools in demolding the blanket mold, you want to remove the mold box from the mold base. 
Remove all the cardboard from the outside of the mold and then clean up the edges of your silicone mold. The zipper cut is a special technique in the production of a one-part block mold. Working your hobby knife back and forth in a zigzag sawtooth fashion, you produce an incredibly well-locking keyed mold. After you've made the initial cut, carefully cut through the model and the edge of the zipper cut. Do not cut all the way to the bottom of the mold. You just want to cut far enough down to easily remove the model and the future castings as well. As you can see, we have a rubber mold key that fits itself perfectly.